I just came back from diving. Got the one octopus, big one. There are many events in the last two, three hours. I was out. I don't know if I can capture, but I want to try. It's about how we grow, how we learn, how we get idea, how we get enlightened, how to live life. It's mouthful, but let me try. The first thing is that it's a beautiful day. I couldn't tell which way to go. There are two diving spots, but I decided. And it, when I went there and diving, I noticed that the water was a bit murky because of the river, overflow from the river. Anyway, while diving, there are lots of uh, events that made me to think such things as if I want to carry something, how to handle it, how to make a pocket or tie it to the, the floor that I bring. And unless things are well streamlined, you lose the momentum and you get disrupted. And every time I, it happens, it's good because we can improve. <clears throat> so I have to keep that in mind and realize that there's always room for improvement. I've been diving here for 10 years, but so many situations, uh, condition changes, and the setup changes, the plan changes, you have to live like that. So one thought is that uh, if you have a focused idea of what to do in your life, like having a mission, like if I stay here a long time and dive lots of uh, times, then you can assemble ideas and organize things. But because of the situation changing, I have to keep inventing. So life is the process of uh, adjusting or coming up with a new idea, new strategy, and get things done. And every time you do it, you may make a mistake. So you try to streamline and dedicate certain principles always practice. One of the idea that popped up when I was diving was Warren Buffett. We have the scene of him paying some money in cash, the coins and the bills at McDonald's where he pick up lunch every day, as I understand. And I thought the way he did it indicated that he had that streamlined. He had two or three options, what to eat, but it changes. So he have different pocket, how much to what so that it doesn't take time to go through it and he doesn't think about it. So diving and paying bills at McDonald's, if it's continuously doing it, you dedicate. Diving, if I can continuously doing it and adjusting, you know, that, that's something I can do, but it, hopefully you can dedicate so you, you don't have to worry or change, but you have option A, B, C. But if your life is lots of ideas and traveling and meeting people and work situation, relationship, you have to keep inventing and reinventing all the time. So that's the thought that if you have a great mission and if you're CEO, let's say, or top management, you may have more dedicated for that mission to happen, therefore everything it's meant to flow. So if you're in the organization, you want to have people who can communicate well, work well, and they establish that relationship. So it becomes a certain way of running the company. Whether it's an investment company, or a company like a Google, or Meta, or Facebook, it doesn't matter, but the top management has to have huge idea 
and based upon lots of information, option A, B, C, and keep on adjusting, but dedicate the whole time. But if you look at each person, say middle management or at the shop floor, the lower level, or younger people get into work or living, you don't know what you want to be or you are good at. So it's a process of figuring out who you are, what to do. In the process, you make a mistake, find a way. And more you get to know how the process functions, you can dedicate certain things, option one, two, three, like I was talking about. So living life is a continuous process, whether it's at the top management, middle management, shop floor, or young people from a baby. The whole process is a continuous process of adjustment or coming up with the idea and implementing and learning the lesson and adjusting and keep on continuously improving. So it's affirmation, affirmation of what I've written in the book, like a continuous improvement. And I don't need to go through that, but just to remind myself that I have to have a good principle for diving and so forth. An important thing in that process is that you are relaxed. If you're not relaxed and when things change and you get upset, worried, then you are off in your mind to worry about it instead of facing the issues on the spot. So that's what I mentioned about the samadhi, have a calm and quiet mind especially when you have some trouble. So that's one obvious thing that I thought of. Then let me jump into Zen and talk about enlightenment or awakening. Idea of awakening is, to me, similar to coming up with idea and continuously improving and making a mistake and adjusting. So in life, you make a mistake, you may suffer, and you learn the lesson how to not make a mistake and find a way to live well. So in principle, it's a process because we don't know everything about ourselves and external situation, how they change in permanence. So we have to keep on adjusting. And like I mentioned about relaxation, calm and quiet mind, what I call samadhi. Uh, your mind is empty, no mind basically. Instead of mind caught up in certain issue, leave it alone, don't touch it. And if you get touched, then you can, you know, you get uh, confused perhaps. And in the meantime, you, you may lose the balance of what is to do. So to be able to not just locally doing things, but having an overall picture of what's going on, we want to have the mind calm and quiet to the point of empty mind, so no mind. The same with the self, instead of me and the shark or the octopus, which I got, <laughs> by the way, in this trip, the big one. Whatever the situation, the opportunities pop up, you may need to adjust if you get caught up or leave it alone and make assessment, looking at the whole picture and see the importance of it and how much to dedicate to work on that while not forgetting the big picture. So that's the picture of the brain, how to operate, but the big picture of, of how to assess the situation is listening to the heart. And for that to happen, samadhi, we need to have a calm and quiet mind, relaxed, no mind, no self. So it's a continuous process, again, but not just within the framework of work and so forth, but the life bringing lots of opportunities and ideas and difficulties 
and we are to learn continuously. And the suffering is like an error of making mistake, but we can learn from it. And that's the process of the learning in life, and it continues. I see it continue until I die, because I change the situation change. You need to respond. So that's the basic principle, and the idea generation addressing issues, learning from whatever happened, is similar in the sense of awakening. So if you look at the awakening, you may think. Like enlightening is a one shot deal. I had the awakening experience 24 years ago almost, and it was indescribable. But after so many years of studying Zen and comparing notes with others, I now have a sense that that awakening is actually to be considered not just a one shot deal. Because again, internally you change, externally you change, and the path you take has to be continuously adjusted, come up with ideas, and move on. And if you don't do that, then you get lost, and therefore you need another awakening, whether it's idea or major awakening, which is like connecting the brain activity to the listening to the heart, the big picture I was talking about previously. So all that process is the foundation of life because being limited in the mind and being limited as being of a human not God not infinite wisdom not AI even the AI has a limitation perhaps which I can talk some other time uh, we are to utilize the best of what we got and make a decision take action, not just thinking like a philosophy and living in the philosophy, <laughs> but then you have to live your life. So, well, it's meaningful to have a philosophy, but not the applying to the life is not meaningful. So the, the, the pragmatic way of looking at it is that we need to have idea, creativity, wisdom, and one of them this awakening or enlightenment. But even awakening, enlightenment will change because we change, the situation change. That's my view. So what I realized, I don't know if that was in the water or coming out of the water. I've been thinking about this and it, it came to realize the obvious, it's not actually obvious, uh, improvement and the Zen core is like that. Before, it's not obvious. When you get it, it becomes obvious. So, the situation in Zen, when they talk about um, what's the word? Suffering is enlightenment. I'm trying to translate from Japanese to English, so it takes time. Suffering, bunno, ya delusion is enlightenment is the literal translation. So it's paradoxical. Why delusion is enlightenment? It's like a coin. You know how to resolve this paradox. The way I thought resolving that paradox today is that if you don't have delusion you don't have enlightenment. It's like a beauty and ugliness or good and bad delusion, you know, there's opposite. It's a dualistic vision, but if you say those duality, or in this case, delusion and enlightenment is equal, delusion is in enlightenment. That's the word in Zen. How do you digest that? One way is as it is. What it means is that in relation to the discussion about how to come up with idea, idea is like an enlightenment that you resolve the problem of life. 
and what it means is that you know you have to have a life to have enlightenment <laughs> or what it means is that you have to have delusion to be enlightened as human being we have lots of opportunity so delusion is in enlightenment makes sense in delusion there's the possibility of enlightenment and the opposite is true after enlightenment in that enlightenment is delusion coming back because we are human it's like uh, you solve the problem you have a new uh, standard operating procedure what to do but the environment change you adjust or you are changing you have to adjust that's life so this is obvious so maybe obvious thing is not going to help because you understand in the brain but may not act upon it that's why in zen they don't talk about what the solution is with other people you have to understand and apply it so if you use this idea delusion is enlightenment or awakening what i find is that the life is a continuous process of delusion enlightenment let's say so it's one smooth well there may be up and down you know is in the process so if you know what the process is and if you go through like a shila samadhi panya you you get upset you have samadhi you did your best now something is not happening it's painful but you you relaxed instead of caught up in the delusion and that bring out the wisdom so that's the process in that case of shila samadhi panya panya is insight could be awakening could be idea generation that i talked about so whole life is a continuation of that some are bigger than others but if you know the principle you see the point of delusion is enlightenment or you may find the same idea or same principle as bad is good within bad is good within question is the answer within beauty is ugliness within ugliness is beauty that's how the mind works and instead of being too occupied in one thing but see the broader picture and look at the process so i thought about navali in russia also when i was diving it's a sad situation that happened that he died i saw the video i posted some youtube on that maybe a few of them but that problem put in whatever happened people suffer nabali committed his vision it may be seen as failure but maybe that failure is a potential for success especially when i look at the many people going through funeral lots of flowers i feel sadness but out of that is the source of energy the successful future that they would come up with so you can look at the negative but within the negative is a possibility no guarantee but if you see the life in that pair success failure and then if you succeed within the success is another seed of failure coming up it's a continuous process i said at the beginning earlier life is 
continuous learning, continuous coming up with idea. So that's in essence what I captured and what I captured is also not capturing. <laughs> I, I said somewhere to understand is not to understand. Because if you understand in certain circumstances that you may not understand, it may not apply in the other, in different circumstances. So that's like a delusion, it's enlightenment. You're happy with a solution, but that's the seed of another delusion to come. Not to be pessimistic, but hopefully realistic and have a strong will human will connect to the universe will or God will or we can talk about it some other time so that uh, we learn how to live life and be happy in ha in our happiness different level of happiness absolute way that we can look at life and live upon that idea. Thank you.